Good morning, everyone. We're gonna get started here in just, just a minute or two. So get your questions ready. Melissa, are you wearing a, a Wonder Woman, um, a Wonder Woman like Halloween suit? No, just everyday life suit. Good, very nice. All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna wait. I know there's probably be a few more people. I'm gonna have uh, Professor Jose uh, kind of guide through some of the warm-ups, and we're gonna start with the Q and A, and then we're going to do the uh, the big drills part toward the end. So we're gonna kind of switch the order. So hopefully you guys have um, some Q and A, uh, some questions that we can we can go over after we do the three four minute warm up. But um, but real quick while we're waiting. I would like to hear if anyone has set any specific goals for themselves specific to the situation that we're in, uh, primarily fitness goals, but it could be anything. It could be you want to up your words with friends, gay, uh, playing method, or you want to get really good at, you know, something that you enjoy. I know uh, I was talking with coach JP and he's like, he's like, I'm playing like three hours of guitar a day. I haven't practiced as much since I was a rebellious uh, teenager. So um, that's pretty cool. I decided to get up to 200 pounds and I'm, I think I'm gonna hit that goal tomorrow, 200 tomorrow. It's not a true 200. It's gonna be like 191 plus nine pounds of food and water in my stomach that I'm gonna hold in and step on the scale and do it. And Melissa's like looking at me with her concerned motherly gaze like you shouldn't do that. It's not keto friendly. You were also the one that was uh, freaking out when I was in the ice bath the other day. But you know what? My fingers and forearms still numb. Yeah. They'll, they'll, it'll come back. I read about it. That's terrible. <laughs> I know, yeah. I read about it. I was like, oh, that must be a mild side effect. I wonder what caused that. And uh, turns out it's mild frostbite. So got just a little bit of that. So don't do the 20 minute ice bath. Um, I told you to get out at 10 minutes. Yeah, but we don't take you seriously when you get upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unmuting. I'm going back to mute. All right, but, but um, really before we get started, Who's got some um, who's got some modified goals based on the situation that we're in? I know everyone's number one goal above all is to join as many of these online classes as you can possibly fit into your life. I'm sure that's number one. But what's a close number two? George. I think I'm crushing that first goal. I'm here almost every day. You I don't even I said the other day, I said George doesn't even turn off the link, he just leaves it on until the next one starts. So <laughs> what's your other goal? Um, I, what I've been doing is I've been thinking about every position and I am trying to have a go-to from each position. That's why I'm asking a question almost every class because I, I think of a new position and then I'm like, okay, well, what can I do from here? And because it's weird because I don't have a partner it's like I'm doing, I'm thinking about jujitsu a lot more than I did when I was actually training. So, and then, you know, I've had a couple of opportunities to train. Like yesterday, I trained with Justin, and then I trained with Dr. Luz all the time. When I go train with them, it's like, I feel like I'm going harder and I am more technical at the same time. So it's, uh, I can feel already an improvement there. Yeah. And that, and I want to get strong, like get that strength that I was asking you about, like that hip core strength. I'm doing a lot of work. Which nice. is my hip in the core strength. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes we take for granted having everything that we need, like the mats and uh, an instructor and people to train with. And, and many times when, you, when you're limited, you remove some, your brain has to be more resourceful to come up with clever, clever ways of improving. I say this a lot. When I first started training, my instructor was a blue belt. This was in 1998. So a 1998 blue belt 
So that's not even the same as a blue belt today that has access to all these modern techniques. It was 1998 blue belt in a room with five other white belts uh, almost an hour away. But I drove there twice a day all the time and I really put in the most effort that I could. And I still grew and got quite a bit better during that time. So yeah, there, there's always opportunity uh, to improve absent the perfect uh, circumstances. So yeah, maximize your strength training, your conditioning, asking questions. You know, now's the time where the your brain is is working harder to soak up knowledge and information. Who else has a a at home goal that they're working? Professor Jose, I uh, I've been listening to. I've been working a lot on uh, conscious and mindset, and especially with the situation going on, how it can create a lot of stress in life. So I've been listening, I talk to you a lot about mm -hmm. lectures that I listen to, people that I follow, like, uh, for example, I was talking to you about Jordan Peterson, Yeah, a couple of things, just listening to people. Now that the students are not around is how important it is, it is for me to try to pay attention to the needs that people have, because I feel like that's my job is to serve people. And then a lot of uh, Alan Watts. So a lot of uh, yeah. just focusing on, on who I am and my personality and and my mistakes and my my darkness, I guess, accepting that so I can become a better person. Awesome. Who else? Javier? Javier. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, well, right now, mainly just to try and stay active as much as possible. Uh, I have a goal of trying at least to run at least two to two and a half miles every day. Awesome. And that's about it. Doing a lot of body workouts. Yeah. Yeah. Running is, is, is really good too. A lot of people are like, oh, I wish I ran more, but I'm too busy. It's like, you have time now. Who else? Anyone else? Melissa? I've got two goals. Let's hear them. One, I'm going to be able to stand on my hands by the time this is over. Right on. Very cool. And I'm going to run a 10K. Okay, awesome. I actually started running and it turns out I can. I just super hate it and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, it is uncomfortable and it's not enjoyable until you start getting good at it. I think that's a lot of things. So very cool. I think Jack has goals. <laughs> Are you um, bro, actually, running is one of my big goals. Uh, something that I have not done in years and I just started doing it the last couple of weeks and and I started off, uh, I mean, I hadn't done it in a while because my knees hurt, my back hurts. And I always, I, I start running and I stop. And then I did, so now I'm doing it uh, uh, periodically, you know, every other day. And it's yeah. it, my, it, it's starting to get easier and easier. Excellent. And my other goal is to get some strength back. I haven't really done any kind of strength training ever since my neck surgery. So, and I've really felt, the, felt that. So I'm trying to get some strength back. So those are my two goals. Very cool. Who else? Who else wants to share? I wonder if Donovan has any goals he's working on. Go on, Donovan. You were leaning in like you looked like you were going to unmute the, the, the screen there. Let's hear it. Um, I, one of my main goals is to um, keep up my good grades in school, even though I may not be there right now. The this computer. Morning. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to feel a little different not being in a classroom and having the teacher, you know, directly interact with you. But, um, but that's where you take over setting the goal is the most important thing, like set it. So you have something that you can look at each day and focus on, you know, whether it's like, okay, I'm, I have a, an assignment that is going to um, be part of the high grade that I want, then um, you need that sort of tangible goal that you can look at and review every day. It's like Javier, it's like two and a half miles. Like that's your, that's kind of the benchmark every day. So very good. Very cool. Mine is going back to my healthy eating style. Nice. Instead of all cool. the, the, you know the, what I think? Foods, the healthy foods. What, so what were you, what are your unhealthy foods? Popcorn and chips. Oh, those are delicious. <laughs> I've been doubling down on those trying to make 200 pounds. So uh, donuts, donuts help you gain weight. <laughs> no, I can't do the too much sugar, but I love donuts too. <laughs> yeah. I really thought that the 200 pounds is going to be just fun eating, but it's actually, it's exhausting. I feel like I have to sleep nine hours to recover from digestion. 
Screen. I get it. I get it. Why, why are you doing that anyways? No particular good reason. It's more like um, I've never weighed that much and I probably never will. Uh, but I'm not just trying to get fat and, you know, just trying to add weight. I'm, I'm trying to put on like body mass too. So because I'm slowing down because we're not able to train that much and I've got a pretty healthy appetite, I was like, well, this would be a fun time to do a, a physical challenge, which I like. Like I did the ice bath as a physical challenge. Um, we do this Warrior Crucible event here. Um, sometimes I'll fast, like right after the, the thing I'm gonna do right after the 200 pounds is do a five day fast. So no food for five days, just. Yeah, I wanna do it. I wanna do a seven day fast again, all water. I've done it before. You feel yeah. great. After the third day, I mean, you can keep going and going. You just have so much energy. Your mind's clear. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome in every angle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do five. I've done three. Uh, five would be good. Seven, we'll see. That's that really easy. Good. After you get past the third day, I mean, you can go 14 days. Thirty easy. <laughs> Maybe. And I'll just shriek in front of everyone as the. You will. <laughs> you will. But you'll be just so energized and so light and clear-minded. Is amazing how clear you are in your mind. Well, you motivated me now. I might have to. I might have to do a, a seven. After the 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Well, because my normal weight's about 172. So uh, I'll probably drop all the way and, down. And those of you guys that haven't trained with him, you can definitely feel those 15, 10 pounds difference. <laughs> <laughs> I like all my all my geese and clothes are like tighter everywhere. So uh, yeah, it's, more va- it's more vanity than anything, but it's also been a, a, a good challenge. What about um, what about Isis and Bailey's? Y'all are the last two. And then we got to do some jujitsu. Zandria, what's your goal? Well, since I got laid off, I could uh, start learning how to play guitar again. Oh, you got to get with, um, have you, have you practiced before? Yes. Okay. Right on. You should, um, you ought to schedule a time with JP, a zoom lesson like this, just to like, you guys can play and share ideas. Cause, um, yeah, he's, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you've seen him play, but he's pretty ridiculously good. But that would be, that would be fun. Yeah, and I saw the post that you... You know, that, that actually gives me an idea to send out, um, I'm just volunteering his services right now, but I want to, I'd like to send out, a, <laughs> I think I'm going to send out an email, just attention all guitar, you know, enthusiasts, and maybe do a meeting just with everybody at the school who plays any level of guitar, like, uh, and just kind of do it. George, uh, you and JP, that's going to be a project that you guys uh, do. So JP will um, play some of the stuff he's been doing. And then George will tell him how his theory is wrong, but it still sounds okay. <laughs> and then add some corrective uh, measures there. You guys that don't know, George actually is a guitar teacher. George, are you doing like, on, are you doing online lessons now too? Yeah, actually, I've been doing a lot of my current students. I've transferred to online, and I am offering online guitar lessons. Okay. This wasn't a plug for you, by the way, bro, but <laughs> while we're here, yeah, you can do it. All right. George Barrett, I think it's the first time you've been on. Maybe you were on one other class. How are you, sir? Unmute yourself and say hello. It's other George. He's probably put it on his back. He's putting on his galaxy spats. Okay. All right. Uh, Bailey, Bailey's last ones. And then we're starting. Hi. Okay. Hi there. We do go run in the morning. We'll be doing it for a few weeks. And then my goal is to teach Dominic how to do it around the world because he can't do it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, neither can uh, Professor Todd. It's okay. <laughs> so, uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, I know we don't like to share our goals sometimes because they're they're kind of uh, private, but there's there's magic in putting it out there. You know, when you put your goals out there, you tend to hold yourself more accountable. When you hold it in, say, I'm going to do this. Well, no one's telling you you should do it, and we can let it go. So uh, thank you guys for sharing, and let's get started. Hey, Coach JP, um, I was just talking with Zandria. She's not working as much now, so she wants to play more guitar. And I was talking with George. We said we need to do a Zoom meeting with 
everyone from the school who plays any type of guitar yeah and everybody can just get on and like ask questions and share music i think that would be a pretty awesome meeting that would be okay be all right cool. that's gonna happen let's get started team light up and let's bow in wait a second let's get this a little more straight okay all right, so you ready, steps, feet together, and bow in. I'm going to have Professor Jose take you through just a quick warm-up, maybe four minutes or so, just to get warm. Then we go right into the Q&A, and then uh, we'll finish with some tight routine and some drills. So, after you, sir. All right, listen up, team. So, we're going to do a couple of drills uh, with the hips on the floor, and they're going to help you with the submissions or whatever technique we're working on. For now, let's just get on our backs here and then work circles with our legs and rotate into the side. You might ask yourself, besides getting me warm up and helping me stretch, how is this going to help me? Well, just think about it. Whenever somebody's grabbing your pants, you don't want to pull the grip, but you can circle around it, circle in. When you're trying to work your lasso, you can circle in. When you're trying to defend guard, as they're passing, you can circle your foot in and recover guard, all right? So this is basically what I'm doing here, creating circles, all right? Going in one direction, then I can switch the direction, right? I can do one leg on his own. I can do the other leg on his own. There we go. Just like that, big circle, all right? So now the next one we're gonna work on is we're having our hands on our collar here, keeping our neck off the ground. And all I wanna do is make little circles and stay in the same position. Notice how my hips move and then my shoulders move. Now I do rock myself a little bit at first, just so I can get my hips off the ground and my shoulders off the ground. Then I can go back. When the vents leave, I create more rhythm. I like to go all the way around and then go back. The way you can challenge yourself, you can do it for time, right? Or you can try to make a goal, going around five times, coming back five times as well, right? Keep going, team. So it's very similar to the movement here, but now I'm moving my hips. Good. Next one now, we're gonna use it for our omoplata attacks. When I see people going for omoplata tags, they typically go here, right? So they don't move their upper body. They're just trying to go for omoplata and get stacked. So this drill is very similar to the one we're doing. I'm swinging my leg, making a big circle, like I'm attacking the omoplata on the shoulder, and I'm circle. And then I can add foot on the ground. Foot on the ground, kick. Foot on the ground, kick. Foot on the ground, kick. Put on the ground, kick. Then I can go back the other way. Put on the ground, kick. Put on the ground, kick. And I can lift my hips up more. And now I can go for that heavy omoplata attack. Go back the other way. Now I can at speed. Again. Good. So make sure you guys write down these drills. They're very good. I saw uh, Andrew Gabal doing this drill at the end of one of his matches against Orlando. Uh, he won just by getting advantages attacking the Omoplata. And then he did this drill at the end to show what he was doing. The next drill, I like to think about it as an armbar attack, right? So if I attack the armbar here, I'm gonna get stack. So what I'm doing is very similar to the triangle where I switch my hips. I can use my hands on the, on the ground, my elbow, and I can switch my hips, right? So now think about an arm bar. Curl. Then I go back. Then again. Then I go back. Then again. Then I go back. Then again. So I hips up, curl my feet down, and I trap the arm. As I get better, then I can keep my hands right here, right? Arm bar. Then I go back. Arm bar. Then I go back, arm bar, then I go back. So now it's like a core exercise slash work in the movement of a submission. Great, awesome. Next one, very basic triangle. 
All right, we can start by bringing our hips up. Again, I can use my hands, my elbows, All right? Then I can make a triangle. Then I can add the speed on it. I mean, the, uh, the turn. I go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. I go back. Go this way. Good. So if you guys been following the workout, right? It's like it's building up, building up. Next one, it's a cross collar attack, right? And all I'm doing, I'm keeping my guard up, activated, head off the ground, shoulders off the ground, and I'm shooting my grips up and I'm pulling tight to me. Every time I shoot my grips up, I want to sit up and pull, up and pull, up and pull. By now, you should feel more of the core exercise by here. Notice how we started very low with the legs movement. Now we're building up our exercise to here. Again, right, up, pull. I can switch, up, pull. Keep going, give me about 30 seconds of this. Great job, team. So I like this workout a lot because you're doing attacks, basically the movement of the submission, right? And it's just like a core exercise. Whenever I do abs, try to work my exercise from the lower body up to the higher body, right? And that's basically what we did today. Okay, guys. So like I said, let's take it open for uh, some questions for the next um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I will have to step out in about 10 minutes, but can answer a couple of questions and then Professor Jose can answer a few more. Uh, and then we'll finish off with some more uh, drills and conditioning. So if you have a question or a position you'd like to look at, unmute yourself now and we will go over that with you. No one? Uh, Jordan. Have Who, yes. Who we got here? Javier? Uh, Yes, uh, I have a issue with the uh, when I try to do the hook sweep. A lot of times, um, again, whenever I get into that position, when I, I had everything you know engaged, I have the uh, the underhook with the belt and I have the sleeve. And right when I get to the you know the right when I'm about to sweep them off, they have the tendency you know uh, posting with their knee and somehow breaking the grip and posting again with their hand. So I want to know what are some other options to, to do right after that? So the hook sweep, you always have to, let's go right here. Always have to uh, be ready for how they're going to counter because they can certainly counter. When I have this underhook position, okay? Let's just look at a couple of the basics right here, right? One, my right shin is right in the middle but my knee leans outward, okay? I don't want my foot uh, shallow on the leg. It's not enough power. I need it underneath, knee wide. And then I push with my shin and pull with my hand. This takes away some of the um, base that they have, okay? Now, part of my power, a lot of times when I'm here, I'll hold my hand to the, uh, pin their hand to the, their stomach. But a lot of my power here, is what I do with my right arm, the underhook arm. Because just find, find your base and kind of stay on top of it. Yeah, here when I start to go, he, I feel like his ability to turn, you know, his head and kind of, you know, lean in the opposite direction can sometimes help him. So one thing that's gonna help you, Javier, is adding speed at the right time. So sometimes when I'm here, if I can fall quickly, and yank quickly, I have a better chance of getting the sweep than if I try to do it at the same speed, okay? So um, now I'll get to your, your specific question, what do I do when you know, you're kind of saying they you lose the grip and then they post? Um, we have some follow-ups if we lose the, the hand, but I ought not lose this hand 
very well. I'm, I'm either really, really sinking down like this, or I am pushing into the stomach, okay, and lifting here. Okay, when I do that, that takes away their ability to get the arm out. Now, if I, either of those is a loose grip, right, then the whole technique can fall apart. So if I grab the wrist, but I don't pin it, then he's in a wrist pummeling type position. If I grab the arm, but I don't tuck it, then he can kind of pummel his arm inside. The slack has to be taken out on both. Pulling or pushing. See this? And then add a little speed. And speed means throwing your shoulder to the mat. And my right arm is pulling. Like my right arm here is pulling like I'm trying to throw him over my head. Like an exaggerated movement there. Okay? So I might be here. Oh, I'm stretching, kind of patient. And then it's really, really fast when it's go time. And that's where you bridge the gap between doing everything technically right and then timing how to do that. Because if I do everything technically correct with my grips and he does everything technically correct with his balance and counter, then it's a stalemate, right? So part of technique is knowing when to execute the move with speed. And you can think about throws like that. You can have a perfect, uh, let's say just a double leg takedown. A perfect double leg takedown will never beat a perfect sprawl. But a perfect double leg takedown timed with a fake, when they think you're going for a single or think you're gonna grab their head and then you shoot and you're just a, split second faster than how fast they sprawl. Now you hit them before they make their sprawl. With this, I'm trying to hit his off balance position before he gets to a post or the opportunity to put his head down or turn or anything like that. Okay, so, okay, so now part two of that, when I go. So first of all, yeah, we should not be losing this arm. If we're losing the arm, we got to tighten that up. Okay. Um, but he posts on the leg. Oh, post on this. Yeah, this. Okay. Don't just give up right here. You've got a lot going for you right here, right? My leg is still lifting. And sometimes my right hand can go lower on the belt and actually punch him over. So you can turn a sweep, uh, you can finish a sweep by changing what you have. You just gotta recognize what to do. A little off balance, but he's not falling over because of that leg. That leg is posted here. There's still no post over here. I'm punching more that way. I just had to change my grip, okay? So one more time here, stretchy, boom. All right, I just lower my right hand and now I punch. And I lift it a little with my leg too. That works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. I need to be ready for other opportunities. Oh, post, sometimes here, I like to bring the foot in. Stretch a little bit. And I might sweep them, but I love looking for this arm. If I'm not combining attacks with my sweeps, I'm half as dangerous on both, right? You have to know when you go for submissions, they will be defended and it's easier to sweep. And when you go for sweeps, submissions will present themselves as arms basing. And now you have attack opportunities. So think about like an exercise you can do is to write down the potential attacks that you have when they counter one of your sweeps, right? Potential submissions. And from a hook sweep game, they're gonna mostly be armbar, triangle chokes, and oplatas, just because you have separation 
and they have their arms out. When arms are out, what do we have? Arm bars, triangles, omoplatas. That's those are the games that we have. Okay. So um, we could do a four-hour seminar just on hook sweep follow-ups because there are so many. But I want you to think about the primary um, you know, ideas here are better control of the posting arm, more power and speed in the fall and the lift, and then maintaining that position and looking for ways to continue the sweep or offset and maybe take an attack. And then combining sweep to attack, you go for the attack, they counter that, back to the sweep. The, the best sweeping people are always attacking submissions too. They're always threatening those as well because now he can't just focus on one danger. Like, am I gonna fall or am I gonna tap out? Which one do I want? Neither, right? So um, does, that, does that help a little bit with uh, your, I know that that was more complicated of an answer, but I don't know how to answer it differently. But does that help a little bit, Javier? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, guys, I got to step off and check some real quick. Professor Jose is going to um, take your questions. George, next question. All right, Jorge. Okay, so I'm, I don't know how – this is more of a generic question, um, so I don't know how good it's going to be, but I run into something with Justin. Uh, now that I've been working a lot on guard retention stuff, Mm -hmm. And if my partner is coming into me, um, I can keep him off me. Like, I'm not getting pinned, not as much anyway. Like, they really have to work hard to pin me. Uh -huh. And Justin figured that out pretty quick. And a way that he got me, uh, that he pinned me uh, yesterday, and I had to, like, end up in that smash position and had to defend, was he stayed out to where I didn't have any grips in it. I was playing, kind of playing this open guard. And he didn't really, like, try to – get a grip and pin or anything. He did this like explosive shift to one side before I could like catch up to him and he, and okay. he just move around me. So what are some, some general strategies that you would use against somebody that uses that kind of explosive move? With no grips? No grips. Okay. Uh, well, I, I would have to ask what kind of guard you're playing. I would assume you're like a sitting guard or, or sitting up or you're on your back. I started sitting. I was sitting here, and then as he was moving, I was here, and I okay. kept back here, here. I was playing this kind of a game. And yeah. You know, I kind of follow him, follow okay. Him. All right. I understand. So uh, there's a lot of fundamentally things you can do, right? Um, kind of give you based on what I look for, because I get that a lot. People are always not wanting to go into my guard. You know, there's, there's always separation, even the higher belts. They, they don't just commit to it. Even Professor, he just won't dive into my guard. It'll, if, if anything, he'll try to pass with something like that or, you know, get to a heavy position that where he starts working from. So I'm familiar with that. I would, I would consider one thing is, well, how many options are you giving him, right? My point is, if I'm sitting here right now, you have an option running around this way, this way. You have an option of grabbing my legs and picking them up. You have an option of pushing my head back. Now my legs are floating. You see what I'm saying? And you have an option of stepping your knee in the middle, driving your knee on my chest and pushing me back and cutting through. Or just going under my legs by pushing my legs up into a stack pack position. So one thing that I always try to do is I always try to give them the direction where I want them to go. I don't allow them to tell me where they're going to pass unless they force that, like I said. Right, and we can get that into the details. So one thing that I always look to do is I'm sitting guard like this. Look at my base. My head is almost falling back, right? My feet, when my body is more leaning back, my legs become lighter. So one thing that I try to do is hide one of my legs, right? The other thing that I try to do is put my other leg close to me. So in order for you to come and grab my legs, you have to literally reach and grab dive your head in and everything. If they dive with the head in, I'm always looking to frame and push, right? Not push with my hand, but frame and create space for my elbows to move my hips away. You see, anytime somebody's trying to grab my legs here, I move my legs back, you see? 
So now if I was going with someone, I don't have a partner here to show you, but if I'm here in this position, my arms are always in and you're committing to me, I'm not reaching out to you and you have to come to me, right? And as you come to me, I have a, a opportunity of maybe like, uh, have you ever uh, mentioned earlier, I can slide into a hook flip position right away, or I can sort of kind of like wait for them to come and create the angle where I put now my legs on top and I'm grabbing, right? But I really always try to keep my feet more behind me without giving up the guillotine position in the headlock. That's why my hand is here. So if they move and they grab my head, I can sit back. If they grab my feet, I can move away. So now it gets to the point where they grab my leg and pin me now my legs are floating. I'm not gonna go anywhere unless I put my leg and start moving and pushing them away. You see what I'm saying? So I would consider the angles that you're given. I would consider your position, how you're hiding your legs. See my legs are in. And even if I'm on my back, I'm always here. I always play with the bottom leg here, hugging it, top leg protecting my elbow. Why? I'll show you a couple of reasons. This one, I don't wanna push away or pin down where now I'm getting cut through or split. So my elbow here sort of protects me. I would like to have it here, sure, but I don't want people to pull my, 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 my pants away, right? So I kind of just hold it. This one is always waiting for the grip, protecting my grip here, my leg. So if they reach and grab my leg, I can grab and circle around like the drill we did. Now I already have a lasso spider, ready to have a reverse de la Hiva because they're reaching in. So I get my bottom leg. As they're cutting through to pin my leg, never got pinned because my arm is under. I'll just grab their foot and immediately stop the cut through pass. You see? The other part of it is of keeping my, my arms here and my elbow tight is that if they start leg dragging me that way, I have, a, I have to be able to move right away. You see, I have to be able to open and do this. So I don't want to stay here. I always want to stay in sort of this position like this. I had a match with a guy named Fernando Alfred here in Houston, a Brazilian guy, pretty stocky, tough guy. Um, and there was a lot of open guard, close guard. But when the guard was open, he realized like any anytime he will come in, I will attack, attack, attack. So he, there was a time, there's pictures and videos where he's staying away and I'm just like this. And I'm just looking for him, looking for him here. Moves, I move, I was active. Now maybe I can even sit up for a takedown. You know, maybe I fake a get up and then slide back into a better guard. So those are the things that I'm looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm already saying like, your feet are way further back. Like I hadn't considered the feet. I knew about protecting the knees, but mm -hmm. my feet were in front. Yeah. In front yeah, of me. Always, You're keeping your always feet protect behind the you. Legs of the side that he's going to. Yeah. Right? So yeah because if I start pushing this leg down, this leg will give me so much space. But if this leg is out, you start pushing, now I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I would have to yeah. get me out and move. All right. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, just like you can do a little basic Get up here, hide my legs in, you know, just changing the angle. I don't have to do a lot. Pose, everything stays here within my guard. All right, cool. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I have a question, coach. Who is it? It's Scenario. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, what is it, Scenario? Okay, um, let's say like the, um, I'm on top and the guy's on bottom and I rush to side control. And there's sometimes like right before I get that, uh, sometimes I get excited and I just pass and I don't think about like my cross face. Mm -hmm. Like the guy on bottom, he would do this grip where he would block this side and then he would like, like a stiff arm and he's able to move away. Is there a way to counter that? Okay, so you're saying that when you're passing guard, let me use the, uh, let me use my assistant right here. So you're saying that when you're passing guard to get the cross face, they're blocking their arms here? Uh, yes, but they're blocking the, the outside. So it's like- <laughs> The cross face, this is the underhook, right? right? They're posting their hand here. Um, let's say like, uh, they would take this hand and they would like push it away. Like they stiff arm it like, uh, so the, uh, cross face one, right? Yes. With the far arm. Uh, no, the, uh, the arm that's the arm that's closest to the, sure. yes. 
But they will like push push away? and they'll push away. Uh, they'll push like this towards going this way. Okay, and you are on this side, so you're pushing and they're on this side. Um, it's like it, I'm gonna use this guy. Okay. Mm. So let's say like this guy's on top of me. Uh huh. Right. And he's taking this hand and I'm pushing it away. Oh, I see. So they're doing the Marcelo escape. They right. Yes. Arm fist are pushing you away. Right. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So you're getting here and they start getting behind this arm and pushing it, right? So um, if, if that happens to you, I'll show you some of the things that I do, right? Uh, if they start pushing my arm that way, I do a back step. And I try to get more into the north south position as they're sitting up. Typically, what that happens, um, let's say they start pushing me this way, right? And when you do a back step, you kind of collapse your hips. You see that? That kind of takes away the frame where they're pushing from, right? Uh, so, yeah, if I'm here and they start stiff arming this way, that's something that I look for. And to make the arm stronger, I look for a grip, like either here or the belt or someplace right under the armpit where I can kind of bend the arm, right? So the arm is a stiff arm. I'm looking to bend the arm, right? Where now he's not able to push as much. I'll give you an example. When I'm training with Professor Travis and I start pushing away, right? And I have a stiff arm. And if I stay here, he will just start collapsing my shoulder. So now I still have the frame, but he's collapsing me and I was able to push me down, right? So arm coming here, pushing from behind, I would look to grab a belt and do sort of like a back step. If they start sitting up, like where they start pushing that way, this is sort of like a basic technique that I got from leg locks when they're grabbing your legs or pushing them away, your arms, I'm sorry. As they're pushing my arm away, think about doing like a lazy numb arm and just pushing it that way, right? So I'll give you an example. So if my, this arm is a stiff arm. As they're pushing me, I can't turn back around. So the only direction is to go that way. I try to turn this way, I can't. So I go out and over, if that makes sense. All right. It's kind of difficult for me to show you right now without a partner. So I will look at those details. Now, the other, the other question that I have is why they're getting behind you. You see what I'm saying? The cross face is here and they're sliding their arm under. I would assume is the forearm, right? If you are getting in here, I would assume this arm away is coming under your armpit. You see, the arm is coming around the armpit that allows my hand to go in and start pushing it away, all right? So if this far arm is coming under my arm, then I gotta consider about changing my angle, all right? Think about hip pressure and think about just rolling the hip here. Because when you do that to me, if I'm here and you roll the hip, it takes away a lot of the power it takes away a lot of the angle. Second, I'm not under your armpit. The armpit was here. You're pushing me away. And I change my, my, my position. Even before you get there, it's very difficult for you to get under. And if you think about getting under my arm by now, I can just grab it and lift it up and take it away or swim my cross face in. I don't have to be in this traditional sight mount position to have a cross face. I can keep that hip roll and drive dive. I usually do this because I want their hips to turn away. And now I can attack the back or keep staying on top and being heavy, all right? Uh, so it's a little difficult to show you without a partner, but I'll consider changing your position, right? As you're trying to pass the guard, maybe go to the knee on belly just for a little bit and then settle back down. Or like I mentioned, if they do get into that position, think about changing into a north-south slash, maybe sit up and kick the arm, arm over the pressure when they're pushing away. All right. So hopefully that helps a little bit. If not, um, I'll let Professor Travis know of your question. See if you can touch it up when he's able to, or whenever we get back in here, we can go over it. All right. Thank cool. You. Any more questions? Unmute yourself. If you have a question. I've got a question. Yes. What is it, Melissa? Um, okay. So I've been really concentrating on trying to loosen up my knees and make them more fluid because they've been so tight, especially since we're not training. Mm -hmm. um, what I've noticed is like whenever I put somebody in um, 
Oh my God. Butterfly. butterfly. Whenever I put somebody in butterfly, it's almost like I'm giving them the pass because my knees really can't take it. Okay. It's almost like too much pressure on it. Is it something that I'm doing wrong or is there something I can do to help that motion? Uh, I mean, it's understandable that your knees, you had surgery on your knees, right? Yeah. Uh, so there, um, especially right now, it hasn't been over a year, right? Since you had the last surgery? Yeah. So right now you're still technically on rehab um, time, right? I think you're coming back from an injuries. is not as easy as people think. Like I have injuries that I'm still working on and targeting right now. There are injuries that I had from 10, eight years ago. The reason why is because I never ass assessed them the properly. I, I, I always thought I was feeling good. But when your body is giving you that, it, it's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, uh, it's a warning, right? It's like, hey, that part is, is still weak. So can you work on your knees? Of course you can work on your knees. You can do a lot of things to, to make them stronger. Um, that would obviously require exercise. Um, They're gonna be leg exercise. You can do a couple of things with uh, yourself is maybe being considerate of the butterfly position of not separating so much from your knees where you have to load them up and now all their weight is here. So the adjustment that you can make right now while you're trying to strengthen your knees is probably trying to work on keeping your knees so much tighter to you. So, oh, and then keeping this little B distance here between my feet. If I play the butterfly where my, knee, my heels are touching my butt here, my knees are going to be tight, right? They're being pressure in. So I always got to keep that consistency. Now, if I feel like my knees are being crushed other way, I, I had knee injuries for a long time, I will push. I will, I will separate from that position, right? But yeah, I think keeping your knees a lot closer to you. Second, keeping your feet activated. Not letting my, see how my toes are hanging loose. I'm always activated. Every time I have a hook, even from a hook flip position, I'm very activated. And then the other thing, a little detail maybe, is instead of sliding back, is I'm always looking to, and this is for uh, Javier too, uh, I'm always looking to get in more into a butterfly position, right? So, or a hook flip. So even the same thing with butterfly. A lot of times I get here, I can't load them up. I ride, I load them up more. The next thing you know, they know that big bridge is coming and I load them up even more, so they can't stop it because I was able to build the momentum. Um, the other thing that I would consider is where is your knee placing, placement, right? So in a butterfly, if your knees are between you and that person's chest, I feel like there's a lot of separation. So it's like Professor said, you want your hook sort of being activated in here, right? And you want your knees more on the outside of my hips, not so much on my chest where I'm able to sprawl and push down on your feet, all right? Uh, the other thing, maybe using the foam roller, right? How do I use the, the foam roller for that? Well, there's different things you can do, right? But I'll give you an example. It's totally different, but it can help. I like practicing my triangle chokes on a uh, foam roller. This is why, because when I do a regular triangle, I have a lot of gap in here, but because I'm able to really find sort of like the neck here, staying tight and locking my triangle. I'm able to sit up and squeeze, right? So I'm, you do a couple of drills, get your legs tired, and I'm just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Now, how does this relate to the, um, to the hook flip position is where my knees are close to me. You see, I'm able to stay tight. I can do the other side as well. Tight, tight. Then I can do a body triangle from the back. Tight. So I'm constantly working on my squeeze, working on changing the choke, working on getting here, squeezing, changing the triangle. And I'm constantly working on that squeeze, squeeze. So that would come over time. You're strengthening your knee, right? It's a little bit weak. Um, specific workout to make them stronger. I think you probably know a lot of them. I would keep doing a lot of core exercise, a lot of the balancing with the balls, right? So you put the medicine ball here, and then you put your feet on top here, and then you're basically rolling the ball back and forth, right? Then maybe side to side. 
maybe in a circle, maybe in another circle, right? And those are all movements that you're gonna use a lot in jiu-jitsu and, and the hook flip. Uh, where's Melissa? I'm, back. I'm here. Okay, all right, I lost you there. Uh, let me see, go up. Okay, so does that make sense? Yes. Sure. They do a, do, a uh, uh, do the 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 troubleshooting that you're having with Jack, and tell me exactly where is it where your knees feel weak. Okay, so if I'm here in this position and Jack is forcing the pass, right? I might even have the underhook. I feel favorable the moment his weight starts passing. Like the moment my heels come off the ground, I feel like I'm taking all his weight. Yeah. And I'm literally going to give up the pass because I can't hold this position any longer. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you, are you able to pull your knees to your chest more and pull him forward with that there? So how, yeah. does, how does your knees feel there? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Actually, I just need to pull him forward. I need to stop resisting. Yeah. It, it's kind of hard for me to show you with a partner. Stop resisting, Jack. <laughs> but... <laughs> Stop, stop countering. No, you do that to me as well. And But it's a very typical uh, mistake that we tend to do is when we have the butterfly, we want to pull them, but they're resistant. Right. So if I take that with, I'll give you an example. If I try to do a sweep, I won't just hit it unless I have all the grips, like Professor said. But if I, it's like one of those clumsy sweeps that I always do, I kind of set it up one time, let them counter. So if it builds up like false sense of security, and then again, then it's, and then I take away that grip, right? But uh, for here, the other, the other aspect of it is when I sit back and I know that I'm not sitting down, then I slide him, I slide him. You know, I keep pulling him, I part the over. One thing, hold him very good at tying up his knees. So even Professor Chad is very good with that. So when I pull and I can't load him up more, like I keep, uh, I mean, I can't lift him up more, then I load him up more. It's almost like a backwards row, right? And they're gonna post and then I load him up more load them up more and then eventually look how, my, how high my feet are and I'm able to roll. All right. So I was I can do that more. I'm comfortable there. <laughs> yeah. Now here's the other thing too. Uh, same thing, same, same thing as uh, Jorge, the question that he had. I'm in a butterfly guard and you're just sitting back and giving him options to cut his legs to the right. Because if I'm on the mount position, I mean on the top, if somebody's loading me up, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my hips side smash right so your knees are going to go from lifting up and they're side smashing this way or side smashing the other way right and that's when the legs get free so as i'm in this position and i feel like he's kind of loading up getting ready to do a cut or or side smash position i think about maybe getting one of my hooks out which is be this one and changing the angle you see so if i have you here in a butterfly position i have your arm Try to lift you up to me and I can't, and I get my hook flip position. Then I slide in even more and sweep. I don't know if that makes sense, right? That would have to be an adjustment because you're not able to load them up, but you still want to lift them up. Where did I get that from? Um, who asked that question about the follow up on the uh, on the hook flip? Oh, Javier. The, the, the reason why I got that, Melissa, is because when I go butterfly to hook flip, and I let them post or I start losing them, then this is how I work my entries for the leg attacks. Because by that time, they already got heavy. But if I lift them up, it's like a slow motion, right? And then I start working my entries into the leg attack because they're posting over me, right? So, or, or you start working your entries into the edge guard, which is very common, right? The butterfly, can't load you up, boom, and grab your leg, pull you in, now have you in butterfly. I mean, uh, it's guard, right? So, cause this is what I'm looking for from the top. I start posting, right? I start balancing, right? And as a person's trying to go into like an net guard position or something, I, I use back steps, right? So now my base is not right under them. My base was here under them. When they start lifting me, I step my leg back. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I'm into more of a side position. If that makes sense. That's why when they're doing that, when they're stepping back, then I have to change my angle to the legs, all right? Hopefully that answered your question, but I think you just have to commit more of getting under the person and load them up, all right? 
Anyone else have a few minutes, ask your questions? Um, it'd be difficult to show without a partner, but I think I can try my best. Mona, you fall asleep? No, I was laughing at you, but I have a question. What is um, it? Uh, step through pass. I usually hit it all the time, but like when their leg comes like through, mm -hmm. like, like a 50 50 position. Okay. Like defense to like. Can you show me with, uh, can you show me with Dominic? Hold on, let me pin your video real quick. All right, let's see it. This one, like right here for this here. That pass, and when they bring this leg through, I feel like a defense before they knock you down here. Okay. Um, yeah, so get to that position again. Yeah. So right away, I would look, but go back to the stand up. Right away, I would consider thinking about blocking the other leg from coming over. So I, I like to bring my, my, uh, my elbow sort of close to me, right? Uh, yeah, you can do that. But see, Dominic, can you bring your leg over and lock the 50-50? Yeah, you see how you can come over and lock it? So once you have this leg here, um, see what you can do. See if you can keep it tight and posture your hips up, right? So now, Dominic, see if you can bring that leg over. So it's a little bit different, right? Good. Now the other detail too is when you posture up here, you can sort of turn your hip. Face your hand that way. There. You see that? Now see if you can bring he, bring, he can you bring the leg over, Dominic? Out. It's a lot more difficult, right? And then the other detail to that, go back to standing. <laughs> oh. Is with the other hand, if you could grab his arm and then posture up and pull. Yes, now just pop your hip forward. You see how the leg is, yeah. And as the leg is coming over, you might have to go under and pass to the other side. Do it again. Now, when you push the leg out, right, and you're here, you can push it behind you. Yes. You have Mr. Professor Travis here. Her. So, her question, oh yeah, her question is when they step through here, right, and with the leg comes over here. Boom, right there, you see that? So I'm trying to protect my position because this leg is what's gonna push me down, you see? But if I pull the leg up, try to push me down, it's a little bit more different, right? And I'm, I'm being aware of him crossing his feet. Try to cross your feet for this. It's a little bit difficult, you see? Now I can change my angle here. Now, if, instead of collapsing back, I collapse forward. Try to get the knee in, Professor. It's a little bit more difficult, you see? And now I can come with my hip. This is more like, a, like he was saying the timing earlier. It's more about popping my hip forward and getting my elbow in here. Sort of getting, going from here to here. Now, if he starts locking his 50-50 here, it's worthless, you see? And now, go ahead, if I'm here. All right. Wait, Put that on the big screen. Okay. We gotta let everyone else see it. So, now the other part too, I think, you're not controlling this leg enough. When you step through this way, even if he comes in like, see how everything's gonna come off this. If, if this leg is free, he's gonna be able to get that leg in. You see? So when I go here and here, and he's trying to get that leg in, think about kicking that leg out and getting into a knee or belly and dropping your hip. But if he does come in here, boom, I'm in this position, right? I don't want his legs crossing. A lot of times I can go here, you see, and I can step my leg out. But if I'm here and here, right? And if I, even better, if I can grab his arm, posture up, bring my arm 
over his knee and I'll start pushing it. So I can go down below his knee. Now, if he starts crossing his legs, it's really nothing. I can grab the belt, step back, control or like a roll. To here. So that's an orthodox attack, right? That's for people who like to go under. But yeah, grab the arm, grab the leg, pop it forward. See if you can get that elbow on the other side and think about pushing it down with that forearm. Once you get it down to the knee, even if he locks that position, you have so much freedom to move around because the other leg is free. All right, that, does that help? Yes. Cool, awesome. All right, we'll give you 10 seconds if anyone has one last question. Okay, time's up. I think that was enough jujitsu for our brains for one morning. Remember, class again tonight at 6 p.m. You're all welcome to join. And I hope uh, you guys continue to work on your own specific personal goals. I liked hearing that um, there were some outside the jujitsu world goals. I think that's important for, um, for everyone. Even if jujitsu is your very favorite thing, you need to have kind of a second tier and third tier uh, goal as well, whether it's a secondary fitness goal, playing guitar. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, but just something that kind of gets your creativity uh, stirring. And believe it or not, there's a strong connection between other activities and improving your jujitsu because all skills require a certain type of mental approach and finding how to best learn the skill. And when you figure out just how to learn and acquire skill, then you can bring that method of learning that you applied to whatever, even better running. Running is a technical activity. The thing is just endurance. No, it's not. The way you move your arms, the way you move your legs, the way you plant your weight, having the right shoes, all that, it's all technique based, right? And when you think that way, and you then you bring that approach back to your jujitsu, you can look at jujitsu moves with fresh eyes. And that's what we always want you to do. So jujitsu never becomes a stagnant thing where we settle into these hardened views of ourselves. I'm pretty good at this, but I'm not very good at that move. It's nonsense. You just haven't looked at it with the right set of eyeballs. So keep that childlike imagination always flowing and always be creative in the way that you approach it. So Thank you guys for joining another fantastic class. Let's go out. I do have one detail I just remember from Mona, because it's probably like the most basic thing and probably help people uh, from the, this position here. So right here, right? Um, if you see my leg is on this side, right? So one thing that might happen a lot is they might bring the leg under right here. Boom, they start attacking your back, which is something Mona, you do a lot to me, right? That's why I lift and I turn. So now if he wants to bring them again, I might have to pause here for a little bit, right? Now the other, uh, the other detail that I was saying is on, on this position, if I can sort of grab the hips and post here, right? Uh, those of you guys that are higher belts, I can always attack the knee bar from here, or I can simply use this as he's trying to go under my legs to step my leg out. You see? Oh, you sneaky guy. So a lot of times, as I control the hips, he's trying to get this leg under me. You see, I block the gap. And then I can kick my leg out this way, but this is detail. Professor Chad has done that to me a couple of times. He can knee bar me here, right? Boom. So watch my back leg. As I kick my leg out this way, I can I see as he's trying to come under, I'll see if I can Cup. If I can cup right here at the hook, then I'll be able to step my leg out and pin. If I can't, right, I lift and then I step my leg out. I have to be very careful with this knee bar position here. So I have to curl my leg to me and see if I can hide it behind his knee. If I can't, then I really got to think about punching leg through and grabbing the opposite grip. So as he goes for it, punch, 
and I'm trying to come around, sort of like a dark side, because this is very common for them to now push away, start to create space. It puts me in a good position. But yeah, kick, kick that leg over, control, lift the hips up, kick the leg over. That's probably a better option for you guys. Sorry. That was good. I don't know about you, but I think we look pretty good in blue. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Let's bow out. Okay, team, thank you again for your energy, for your great, great questions, and for most importantly, showing up to class one more time. Ready, stance, feet together, attention. Wow, excellent. See you again soon.